Hello and welcome to GPTV on Tuesday the 14th of July. My name is Philip Kingston. And I'm Gary Peer. And Gary, you've had a couple of weeks in the warm weather. I have, Phil, I back have. To, uh, back to the cut and thrust of the enthralling real estate market That's that we're in. That's it, Phil. The weather here is cold, but I'm feeling hot, Phil. I'm yeah, feeling you're, hot. You're feeling hot. And absolutely ready for action. I did have some time off, Phil, in the heat. Uh, it's always nice to come home. Probably a little bit nicer to come home when the weather's just a little bit warmer than it was uh, on the weekend. Well, let's but not, let's not hear back. any complaining from you because no, you got off the plane on Sunday night. And yes, uh, Sunday it was. <laughs> I've got to I tell heard, you, I heard it was that Sunday. was just the most horrible day I out heard there. The coldest day in 25 years or wettest day in 25 it, years. It, it was, it was yeah. everything. It yeah. was coming. It was, it, the weather was coming at all directions. It yeah. was freezing. I got out to do an auction on Sunday yeah. uh, and the thermometer in the car said 7 degrees. Yeah, well, and I expected to see no one anywhere, yeah. but the crowds were out. Uh, interestingly, uh, Lamour Herskovitz from our St Kilda office had an open for inspection on Sunday in Inkerman Street, yep. where she had 52 groups of people right? in that weather? all lined up. She said it was unbelievable because well, well. they all lined up at the front door. It was pouring with rain. The weather was well. terrible. Just goes to show Melbourne's fascination with the real estate market, if you can do that on a Sunday. It continues, and we'd like to hear a bit more about that property. But look, it wasn't convenient for me either, Philip, because I thought the plane might have been delayed a few hours, you know. So think of, think of me well, sitting well, in the think in about Qantas all lounge. People in yeah. Bali, you're lucky you didn't go to Bali. Right. Or maybe you're unlucky you didn't go to Bali. <laughs> no, exactly right. Uh, special shout out to those that yes. had their travel plans uh, mess, delayed, messed up in Bali by that yeah. volcano. Volcanoes can do that to you, they though, can, Gary. They can be like that. People underestimate annoying. a volcano. I mean, you, you, you know, a lot of people in Australia, yeah. they just go about their lives not thinking they about volcanoes. About they don't but, consider volcanoes. But I think that this is a classic case of yeah. you should always be considering what a sleeping volcano yeah. might do. This would be the only real estate uh, program, if you can call it that, uh, <laughs> lunacy, uh, that would mention volcanoes. But Philip, uh, I wanted to also talk Lucky about... there's no volcanoes in our target market, no. Gary. Can well, you unless they're dormant can you and we haven't found well, out yet. It's possible. You Geologists, if you're watching this show, let us know within in our target exactly right. market, if there is a sleeper mm. buried down beneath the surface, yes. we should be uh, bringing to our attention people in the section 32. Be careful when you buy this block of land, yeah. there is a dormant volcano. You're just being silly now, are you? You're just being silly. Phil, not only did I come home to a bit of cold weather, but I came home to this front news article in the age. Let's have a read of so this. So before we show viewers this article, yep. we when we when we started this show back way back when, what yep. number of episode are we up to? No, oh, no, 200 know, something stupid. It must be coming close yep. to 200 or around that mark. Yeah, it is. We said right at the start that we're going to bring you the hard facts about the market. We're going yep. to bring you the good, the bad and the indifference. And the ugly, Phil. And the ugly, Gary. And uh, so we, we had a bit of a chat uh, before the show and yep. said, well, do we talk about this article or do we not talk? I'll about bring this it up. article, but let's. We're, a very we're, educated we're, Swinburne we're, attendee. Where we are not shy to bring you the good, the bad, and the indifferent in the marketplace. So check out this front page yeah. of yesterday's Age newspaper. Yeah, now check this out, Phil. Uh, now of course the market's in a bubble. Now how often have we heard that about the bubble? And whilst look. We don't think it's a bubble. Uh, you know, this is what people are saying, Philip. They're saying that we're in a big bubble. Oh, Sydney, of course. There's no bubble there. I know. No, no, Sydney's just no, fine. It's going to have a soft Sydney's landing. Sydney's normal. Oh, yeah, Sydney's fine. Uh, but Melbourne's in a bubble. Now, can you explain so, that to me? Well, OK. So I've read the article, and I'm yeah. now going to contrast this article to an article that appeared in last week's Age newspaper. Yeah. You were away. Can we flashed when, that up? When, yeah. Well, we'll try and get it. Okay. But when the Reserve Bank, some genius from the Reserve Bank, yep. had come out and yep. said that according to their statistical data... Yes the Australian house prices yep. are actually 30% undervalued. Undervalued, right. So we've got last week 30% undervalued. 9% the bubble this, is going to drop. This week, no, yep. this week we're in a bubble and the market's going to go backwards. 9%. So viewers, you're probably looking for some incisive, intelligent comment yep. from us, uh, which is a big ask, I yep. must say. But let's have a look at it from this point of view. Uh, in the 30 years that Gary and I have been selling real estate, yes. I know viewers, you probably thought got into it when we were three, thank you. Two grey hairs uh, there, Phil. But in the 30 years that we've been selling real estate, we've really only seen two things that bring a real estate market down. Yep. And those two things are dramatically rising unemployment. Yes. That is a killer of real estate markets. Yep. 
always pushes prices down. Yes. When people are either losing their job or very fearful of losing their job, yep. that is a great suppressor of real estate price increases. And the other one is dramatically rising interest, interest rates. rates. Yep. Now, even the interest rate rise is yep. a double-edged sword because generally interest rates are rising because an economy is doing well. Yep. So on one hand, you've got some pockets of Melbourne or Australian real estate. When interest rates are going up, some pockets are doing quite well, generally the affluent areas. Um, but those are the two enemies of real estate prices yep. and at the moment we've got stable unemployment. In fact, yep. there was some data last week which suggested unemployment was coming That's down. Right. And we've got historical all-time low interest rates yep. with some talk that they'll either stay low for longer yep. or go even a bit lower. So we've got the two strongest fundamentals. Yep. And then on top of it, you've got this article that says prices are going to come down by 9% and then the article last week which is saying prices are going to go up or undervalued by 30%. Yep. So let's make some sense out of this, mm. viewers. My take on this is that the areas that Gary Peer and Associates specialise in, which yes. is essentially Melbourne. inner suburban okay, blue yes. chip real estate, yes. these suburbs are generally very resilient they to are. negative spin. So yes. if you're going to wait for the market to come down, yep. you may look a lot older when yep. you look in the mirror. And that being said, and that having been that was said, my take. That was that quite eloquent. Said, I thought. Uh, well, you know, you're just a salesman, really. <laughs> That's really what it's about. Uh, you're just a salesman. We really don't. No, know. I know. I thought I, I thought I, I gave two yeah, points of view, and, that, and then my point of view. And someone might look back. The market does bubble. They look back and they look. And you know, Saturday Night's Entertainment will be watching this episode of GB TV, <laughs> saying that Philip so said, you "Let's have a listen to this idiot." You right? actually agree with me, but yeah. you're just going to, for the for the sake of preserving yeah. the integrity yeah. of the show, you're going to give some well, other spin. Okay, I, I'm going to sit take on the, it away. I'm going to sit on the fence and not put my head out. So that what, way, what, I can't be wrong with what's, anything. What's your take? So, well, you know, I think there's a lot of money coming in that we haven't seen historically, yep. Yep. Uh, and I'm not sure what's going to happen if that slows down or cuts off. I think we will stay. I think the prices will set, settle. That's what that's what I think. And I, I think a few years. Ago, it looked like that was going to happen and we got a surprise let's face it that thing's got a little bit more aggressive than we thought uh, i think prices are going to settle um, but I don't, see, I don't see a bubble bursting. So what, what, do you, what, what do you call settling, Gary? Are you saying staying at the prices they are now oh, or dropping you know, Kind there? of CPI increases, you know, not yep. not, not a lot of growth uh, for a little while. I think it'll go up again, mind yep. you, before yep. it can go down. Yep. Uh, but I, I think we're going to find a place where the market's going to plateau. It might be six months before that happens. Can I just add yeah. another factor into this equation? Because yep. we've talked about interest rates and we've talked about unemployment. Yep. Uh, there is another factor at play, though, that has only really been in this market now for the last three or four years, yes. which is a weight of Chinese money That's what I'm talking com about. coming in. Yep. And not just Chinese money, we're talking about Asian money, you yep. know, whether we be talking about Korea, Taiwan, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, yep. Thailand. Yep. Um, we're seeing a, a weight of money coming in that just didn't exist four or five years That's ago. Exactly right. Now a lot of uh, people are saying, "Yeah, but look at the look at the stock market in Shanghai, which is yep. obviously going. You know, some some incredible things have happened there." I know it, nothing it, about that. Okay, well, I'm yeah. going to say it doubled in value, <laughs> but it's now recently dropped back by thirty percent. Okay. Now, interestingly, yes. Uh, Gary, and you might not be aware of this, but yes. um, something like 80% of Australians hold shares either directly or indirectly, yes. and directly is if they own them themselves, and indirectly through their super funds. Yes. In uh, China, apparently less than 20% of people own shares. So you've got these Your stock market is? gyrations yeah. going there. So my view is that unless something terrible happens in China, this might be another reason why more money comes That's out true. of China, where people saying, you know what, I've just been burnt in the <coughs> stock market, uh, let's buy real estate in economies like Australia and Canada yep. and the US. I'm going to give you a backhanded compliment. You took a damn long time to get to a very good point. Uh, and again, we're just salespeople, so who knows, Phil, we don't make econ but economic... But one thing we will say, viewers, uh, is that if you buy good real estate in good suburbs like we operate in yes. and hold on to it long term, yeah you That's are safe going gets, to do very, yeah. very well over time. We History so. has proven that, that to be that correct. That is a correct statement, Philip. Yep, thank you, And Gary. that just leads us in to this weekend. Uh, firstly, let's talk a little bit about some of the sale highlights, Philip, because we're in Carnegie, but one of the highlights was in Carnegie, um, just up the road, Phil, Carule Road. You yep. sold a beautiful house there not long ago. But how about this property, Phil? The reserve on this property was somewhere in the range, which was 530 to 590. Lo and behold, it's got sold uh, under the wonderful auctioneering uh, prowess of Mr. Lee or Samuel, 
for seven hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. How about that, Phil? Well, um, we're still we were trying to explain that in the sales meeting yesterday, yeah. Gary, as to how, why, what was different about it, and yes. apparently, because uh, we sell one of those a week, we do uh, sometimes Thankfully. more than one one a week, and Actually. we're all seeing yeah, okay. the sales. Yes, yeah, okay. just swallowed backwards there. <laughs> okay. uh, that's probably yeah. on camera, but yeah, you know, we like to share. Uh, Lovely. A lot about ourselves. <laughs> about your digestion. We people, viewers want to see that, don't they? So um, yeah. we were trying to explain why did it get that power. It's hard to swallow that result, isn't it? And we're all basically <laughs> just saying, well, the power of an auction, you okay. just never know. That was very profound. Uh, Phil, in Lansdowne Road, uh, that was another property well, that sold really the well. Samuel yeah. Brothers there at it, it again. again. And that's a, I know that block well, that number five Lansdowne Road. Good block, uh, but gee, pretty competitive. $545,000 quoted in the sort of mid to high fours. Phil, yep. that ran away as well. Another great auction highlight. One that didn't run away, but is for sale now, which we think is pretty good value, Phil, is this Hotham Street apartment. Yes. Uh, that is unit one at 45 to 47 Hotham Street. Uh, you can buy that now for $699,000. Well, Gary, we've got a couple of parties running on that as yep. we speak. Probably get sold that by the may, time this goes to That may well not see this weekend. Yep. So uh, if you are in the market for something good, that is a good two-bedroom apartment in a great building. Fair enough, Phil. Now, we've babbled a lot about the market. I, Let's wanted, talk about no, this. I wanted to talk about one other property that we sold on the weekend, Gary, okay. which was in Bolston Street. Oh, yeah, we did uh, sell that before auction. We? That we sold before auction. And yep. the reason I want to point that out, that was unit number three at 54 Bolston Street. Yeah. One bedroom, one bathroom, one car space. Uh, sold before auction for $330,000. Well yes. done to our St Kilda office Michael there. Jonas again. Michael Jonas yeah, is a bit of a star in Bolston Street. He is. Wanted to point that out yeah. because Bolston Street is a great position just off yes. Carlisle Street. Yes. We're great fans of that area. We push we real are. estate in that area because we know it, love it. And that's and, entry and, level. And believe it. And you can just get a one bedroom apartment there for 330. Yeah. Great first home or a great investment. Try doing that in Sydney Put, where the markets, yeah, exactly, you know, just, exactly. we're just fine. Uh, Phil, this weekend we've got 13 auctions over 10 suburbs, 13 auctions including in 10 the suburbs. property that we're sitting in right here, which we're going to get to, Phil, uh, but because you're just, on Saturday, I think this is your only auction on Saturday. And Gary, I'm happy for it to be my only auction exactly. because it is the most fabulous property, uh, the most beautiful brand new town yes. residence, one of only two with its own street frontage, yes. three magnificent double so we're bedrooms. Now, we, we are, Gary. <laughs> two gorgeous, right out of order. gorgeous yep, bathrooms. Go the entertaining areas where we're sitting of this kitchen meals, yep. family room overlooking a private back garden. It's very private. Private, fresco isn't it? desk, lovely courtyard. Deck. Uh, this uh, everything here just ticks all the boxes. I, I love this property. I love the floors. I love the stone bench tops. Uh, this is very smart real estate in a great position in a growth suburb. Well, now the cat's out of the bag, and you've talked about it, Phil. We are at 61A Woonack Road, Carnegie, coming up for auction on Saturday at 11:30 a.m. And this one is being handled by Sally Zilp and her yes. team, and you have got the auction on us. Uh, Phil, we're starting off on Saturday in Glen Iris in Milton Parade, Glen Iris. Mr. Jeremy Rosen's doing an auction over there. We had a great success recently in Glen Iris. We're back there at 10 a.m. The more Herskovitz auctions, uh, or I should say, handles this wonderful property. Two bedrooms, Phil. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, one, bathroom, uh, one uh, like the look one, of this one place. car space, uh, and that's a really good property. And Glen Iris, uh, well, we set a record in Glen Iris a couple of weeks ago, Gary. Glen Iris is obviously one of Melbourne's blue chip premier suburbs. We like selling, setting records, Phil, and then we just like smashing them again. Yes, we do. Uh, Chomley Street, Paran is a wonderful address, Phil, just situated there off High Street. Leo Samuels auctioning this one at 10.30am. Uh, he's been involved with this, handling it together with his brother and Daniel Buston. Check out the polished timber yeah. floorboards, Gary, in this property. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space. Chomley Street's a favourite position of mine because it runs between High Street and Dandenong Road. One of my favourite cafes is at the intersection of Chomley and High which is Spoonful. So a special shout out to the people that make those beautiful cakes and coffee at Spoonful. There was a band in the 70s called Love and the Spoonful, Phil. There you go, yeah. Gary. Thanks for bringing that to our I attention. I would. And one other thing that I'll just pick you up on, mm. you just gave a bit oh, of good. a shout out to Daniel Buston. I did. Who has just rejoined our company, working down in our Carnegie the office. The Buzz is back, Phil. Yeah, That's yeah. what his nickname great, was, The Buzz. Great, great to have him. Yeah. Uh, he was with Creates us. Creates a buzz. He was with us for a few years, left and and uh, and, and went to... Went to the dark side. The dark side, <laughs> absolutely. Crossed Dandenong Road, he Gary. Did. Went to the dark side. Uh, shouldn't and say that. And now is yeah. back doing some wonderful things with us and great to have have you back, Daniel. Welcome back, Mr. Buston. We look forward to seeing you soar. And he's a very successful agent and lovely young man. Philip, we are in Clyde Street, St Kilda at 11.30. Uh, Lamour and Jeremy Rosens are back doing it again. Tell us about this wonderful yeah, apartment. Great spot. Another one bedroom apartment, one bedroom, one bathroom, one car space. 
great entry level into the market. Just a really good schmick little apartment in a great spot. You've got to love Clyde Street. We've talked a little bit about Woonack Road already, Phil. We're going to be just up the road at 12.30. Uh, Jeremy Rosens is a busy boy on Saturday. Gee, I don't know if he's ever been busier, but 3 at 5 Wall Street, that's another good address. Uh, Daniel McMucker, Jeremy Rosens auctioning this at 12.30. We're all over Carnegie and Ormond, aren't Two we? Two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space. Great aspects, a really good light and bright apartment. Uh, you couldn't go wrong investing or living in that apartment. We have a very experienced auctioneer who we're going to be talking to on the Carnegie Report, which is one of our sister programs to GPTV. We'll be talking uh, to Graham Cullen, who is the agent and auctioneer, uh, our sixth auctioneer, or one of yes, our six auctioneers, one of our six, uh, in Anthony Drive in Mount Waverley. What a great property. and. Uh, I think I might go out and watch Graham do this auction. I think I'll be free at that time. I think you should, yeah. Phil. Go out and give him a pat on the back, some encouragement. Uh, not that he needs any experience. He's got plenty no, of that, Phil. He's been around a long time, a real estate legend. And uh, please, you can catch him on the Carnegie Report. Uh, Philip, in Barclay Street, St Kilda, Jeremy Rosen's rounds off a busy day, again with Lamore there at 1.30pm. This is a great looking building, the, like oh, a flat iron Gary, building, isn't it? This is the most extraordinary looking building. I love it. And you're right, yeah. it is a bit flat iron yes, Gary. it is, Phil. You're right up with your New uh, York real estate. Showing my New York see. prowess. I love this building. Uh, this is a really a stunning, stunning building. Two bedrooms, one bathroom. Uh, basement car parking, secure basement car parking. Cafe downstairs and just... Walk, wake up on a Saturday or Sunday morning uh, and just say to yourself, well, am I going to breakfast in Barclay Street? Yes. Am I going to be breakfast in Ackland Street? Yes. Will I stroll around the Esplanade to, to Fitzroy to the beach Street? For the day, uh, when you like live, Sunday. When you live in that apartment, Gary, you're <laughs> yep. going to be on holiday 24-7, 365. Phil, we're getting That's you... That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, expressed as 24-7, 365. You're very hip, Phil, aren't you? I get, you get a little bit of hipster about you when you're well, selling hip apartments. Uh, and then you'll sell an old home. I like to think, Gary... And then you'll start talking like somebody that was born in the you know, no, 1800s. I've never, I've never done that. No, you have. I have not. Uh, Phil, you're going to get away with a very easy Saturday. But oh no, on Sunday, we are going to work you very hard. You've got a 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30 and 2.30 auction that you're doing. Uh, starting off with a very exciting one with Mr Rosens in Wilgar Street. Gary, check this house out. Architecturally stunning. Fabulous, three to, or four bedrooms, two bathrooms. A picture postcard perfect facade, we've used that expression before. Wilgar Street, a great address, and St Kilda East, a top suburb. And Phil, that was reviewed in full on the St Kilda Report, another one of our sister another programs. Another sister program. Uh, oh, who would have ever thought we'd have oh, it's three, a family of, three programs? Family of web programs, Phil, don't Can we love Can you imagine it? if we ever have 500 offices, yes. Gary? We won't have, we'll have to spend all seven days, the studio. all 24-7, <laughs> seven days a week, yeah. 365, just yep. making movies, making we shows. Will. Why not, Phil? Uh, we can make a show about this home in Rosemont Avenue because it's show-worthy. It is a show piece, Phil. Well, it's a Great show piece, Gary, but one, one, we could describe this as an unfinished symphony. Yes. Uh, this is the most extraordinary 60s home that has been fully renovated by the current owners, but not quite finished. So yeah. uh, one can come along and uh, finish the facade to this house. It's been fully renovated throughout. Quite stunning in size. Fabulous parcel of land uh, on the west side of Rosemont Avenue. Great so, address, Phil. Uh, you couldn't get a better property, really. Great address, Phil, and it's right up there in the Golden Mile of Crawford North, as is this home in Howitt Road, Phil, because they don't get much bigger and better than Howitt Road. No, Gary, 71 Howitt Road, Caulfield North, one of the last building sites yes. left in Howitt Road, and that's not said with any discouragement to this beautiful uh, older style home, which was converted into three apartments. Yep. It's on 1,061 square metres of land. It's it a stately looking property, isn't it? It has three apartments, so somebody could buy that. Yep. Uh, and collect a cash flow while they're considering their building options. Yes. But Howitt Road, obviously the number one street in Caulfield North, and I would suggest the number one street in the city of Glen Ira. Paul Natale and Glen Brick are handling that sale. Phil, we're looking forward to seeing you in action there at 12.30, and then you're going to hop off to Ferno Grove. Now, this is a pretty sexy-looking place. Gary, right? this is the I'm most so, fantastic house. I shouldn't house. say that because there's one viewer doesn't like the okay. whole sex thing. Well, that's right. GPTV. So you've just retracted that statement. I but, but I think it does still stand. Gary, th <laughs> okay. th this is a fantastic house. It's a great address, um, Ferno this, this is... It's, I'm... I'm going to describe this really as a brand new house, but yes. for the lawyers that are listening, technically it's not brand There's new. There's a disclaimer on it. Because it was a yeah. renovation. But when a house is this renovated yes. or rebuilt, is yes. it a renovation or, or a rebuild? We have to call it a renovation. Yes. Uh, but it, in my opinion, it's virtually been rebuilt from the front door to the back yes. door uh, and everything in between. It's the most extraordinary home. It has 
palatial entertaining areas. Yep. This is a home also that you can move straight into, Gary, and not spend a cent because everything's been done. The level of quality, the level of detail, the level of luxury uh, is quite extraordinary here. And it's also got the benefit of having multiple entertaining zones. The lounge dining room, huge. The kitchen is nothing short of incredible. And then upstairs, you've got the most incredible home office or you give bedroom it a, you give or this a big apartments. Rap. Well, like yeah, I'm place, giving it a big wrap because yeah. it's an extraordinary home. Uh, and then, of course, a swimming pool, double lock-up garage. That is the house with absolutely everything. And I'm excited to be the auctioneer. I used to walk past that house every day on the way to school, to Ripley State School, Phil. Uh, and uh, it didn't look like that, I can no, tell you that didn't. much, not in the no, 70s. No, and you no. didn't look like this. I didn't, look like that, so I didn't look like that in the 70s, and I used to run past on the way home when the bullies used to chase me, Phil. And that was always fun, but uh, we'll save that for another episode of GPTV as we yep. move on. The bullies of Rip and Lee that are no they longer there because it's no. been so beautifully gentrified. Rip and Lee and East St Kilda, there are no bullies. The only no. bully you'll find is the is the is the mad pushing and shoving in the cafes <laughs> trying to trying to get the latest exactly, the, eggs the, and toast. the latest gourmet edition. Exactly right, Phil. One of them's in jail actually, one of those bullies from school. Really? Yeah, yeah too yeah, bad. You know who you are, but mind you, <laughs> wouldn't be watching this in jail, I suppose, would he? Uh, and and to... if he is, yeah. he's getting out <laughs> in three months, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> he knows where to follow me, doesn't he? Uh, you weren't really a bully, just misunderstood, and I always yeah. liked you. Uh, Leamington, Crescent, Phil Caulfield East, Graham Cullen, uh, back again. And he's going to be doing this auction, Phil, on Sunday at 1.30pm. Take us through this home, please. Gary, what a great house. Uh, this is a really good-looking home, and it is two bedrooms, one bathroom, and a lock-up garage. Uh, it's, got a, it's just got a really nice feeling to it, yes. this property. Uh, and I would describe it as a very elegant looking home. Yes, and I describe Graham Cullen as Graham Callan, Philip, because I mispronounced your name. Sorry about that, Graham. Uh, we are going to be looking forward to seeing you do that auction. Great position, not far from the race course, Phil. And the university garage. You so can settle in time. Uh, as for an the... investor, it's a yep. great, great position. Exactly right. An investor, you can uh, have both education on one side and you can invest in the races on the other side, if you like. Uh, you can settle in time for the Caulfield Cup coming up in October, Phil. Good to know. We finish off, Philip, in one of the B streets, Burindi Road, which is, of course, known as one of the A streets. Yes, I think. I think you've got to be careful with saying Burindi Road is a B street because whilst you and I get it yeah. because it starts with B, B yeah. and then you then you talk no. about it being the A street. Burindi yeah. Road is the best street in Caulfield yeah. South, South okay. and we know that it starts with B, yeah. but your whole take on it, but it's actually the A street. No, I but find, we've been through it before. I find tedious. <laughs> And, <laughs> and quite pathetic. So, but the B just, streets are the A, Burini, yeah, Bacara, Bialaba. But, but it's not funny. Bent. It's not right. funny, it's not clever, it's not smart. And whoever thought of it, which was not you, yeah. you've taken it up, but it's yeah. just silly. Right. Um, Burindi Road is one of the best you sure streets about that? in Melbourne. Yeah. It happens to be the best street of Caulfield South. Yeah. And this is a, a wonderful I feel four, like I'm being bullied again here on the show A now. wonderful four <laughs> bedroom, two bathroom, double lock up garage, villa yeah. in immaculate condition. Uh, and that should go well. Gary, that's a wrap for the it's weekend. It's a big one, Phil. Lots happening. Uh, you know, big, big July and a massive August coming up. Yes. And it uh, won't be long before we'll be listing for Springfield before you know. In fact, Gary, we're going to start, we're gonna start through, talking about spring soon, but not in this yeah. episode because no, it's still it's gone too long re too. really cold. Babbled on we have. It's always good, though, to bring you the news in the cold and all year round on GPTV. I'm Gary Pearce. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a great week and thanks for watching.